You may not have heard, but the Pokemon world finally has a 3D printer. Well, technically it's called the Item Printer, but this new addition in Scarlet and Violet's DLC takes in raw materials and creates brand new items. So yeah, sounds like a 3D printer to me. So when I was challenged by Sir Toasty Toes to make this thing real, it wasn't easy, but I got the job done. And this isn't just for show, because these Pokeballs contain an entire 3D print system inside. So let me take you through this journey that started a full year ago, because right after I got Tosi's message, I said, LMAO WOW. Because honestly, this just didn't seem like a realistic project, because like, how could this design become a fully functional 3D printer? I mean, in the actual game, they keep that tech top secret, which in video game terms means, hey, don't worry about it. Besides, I already have all my 3D printing needs met because of all the bamboo printers I have. By the way, this video is sponsored by Bamboo Labs, more on that later. But I eventually realized there was still one specific printing need I had. You see, if you watch this channel, you probably know that for one reason or another, sometimes I need a clear resin print. And while I've paid my friend Harry to help out when needed, I've realized that at some point, I'm gonna to need to start doing these prints myself. Here goes the Warhammer fund. Here's the thing though. Resin printing is an entirely different ball game than the plastic melting FDM printing I'm used to. With resin prints, you have a vat of messy and toxic resin sauce that flash cures the print layer by layer with UV light blasted from an LCD screen. If you're lucky enough to get a successful print, then you need to wash it in isopropyl alcohol and then finish the curing process with more external UV light. The resin is expensive, the LCD screens have a limited life, it's messy, sticky, gets everywhere, toxic to touch, toxic to breathe in, it's a nightmare. So every time I see one of these beautiful prints from Flux Tide Designs, I remember all of these facts and I stop myself from making the leap. However, when I looked at the design of the item printer, I realized it provided a unique opportunity. If I could manage to fit a resin printer in the top ball, I could find a way to somehow use the bottom ball for washing and curing the prints. And after doing a lot of research, I came across this, the 3DP Gen 2 Kickstarter. Okay, it's crowd supply, but same idea. It's a resin printer that can fit in the palm of your hand, and even though it would cost me over $200, I decided to take a gamble and send it. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> and a whole 10 months later, it finally arrived. And while it is really small, in order to make this still a manageable size, I'm gonna have to shrink this down a bit. I also bought a ribbon cable extender because I wanted to relocate the touchscreen. And after finally setting everything up, it's time for a test print. And after a quick wash in isopropyl alcohol and blasting this thing with some UV light, this test is officially a success. Now I'll measure everything off screen because it's about time to start designing those Pokeballs. So armed with nothing but a reference photo of the basic version of the item printer, I got to work. And because I'm still learning real CAD, this took me a long time. Plus there was a lot to design for. I'll get into the specifics later, but I'm proud I could make all of these holes and holders, these bumpy bit patterns, and this aperture looking engraving on this cap. So I'm gonna pat myself on the back here and say, I did a pretty okay job. Oh. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, okay, all right, settle down a bit, settle down. Con confetti, what, what's going on here? Oh, big rig. Whoa, wait, are, are you Mr. Volt? You're that guy who designs all those cool animatronics from scratch, like, like Wheatley from Portal. What's going on here? Congratulations, you've won the award. An award? Oh, oh, oh no, I, I couldn't accept it, I, I, Thank you so much. I gotta start those prints. And speaking of 3D prints, everything you'll see today is on Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon and AMS system. And this thing is a beast. And this is the simplest 3D printer I've ever had to set up. Like seriously, it took me about 15 minutes to get from the box opening to my first calibration. But there was one more thing I had to implement because similar to my previous videos on the Bamboo A1 where I had those cool time lapses, I developed a similar system for the X1 Carbon. All I had to do was stick a magnet to the tool head, print out this little holder that magnetically attaches here, put my read switch trigger on the top, and add just one line three lines of G-code to the slicer. Now what's cool about the X1 is it actually has its own camera so you can take smooth time lapses like this, but with my super cheap mod, this is what you get.
Now that everything is printed out, it's time to get sprayed. And with these three cans, I think the colors came out great. Well, it's time to talk about the fact that even though everything's going to be self-contained inside the balls, I still need to do some things to make sure the air is a little less toxic. So I'm going to be using these black carbon. So I'm going to be using these black carbon filters and this Noctua fan to hopefully filter out some of those toxins. And even with all these precautions, I still needed to wear a filtration mask whenever I was doing a print. And gaming that week was a lot less fun. Hey, can somebody push left? Now the resin printer fits perfectly into place, and I extended the screen to come out to the center of the Pokeball. And I can hide the screen whenever I want with this white piece that snaps back into place with magnets, which means it's time to add another project to the streak. The top half also snaps into place with magnets, and I added this flap on the top just like in the games, so I can check on the print whenever I need. Moving on to the bottom ball, the two halves also snap together with magnets, and I'm going to be adding this lock in the middle, just for aesthetic purposes. And after gluing in the rest of the parts, it's time to show off how I'm actually going to wash and cure the prints. For the washing station, I bought this mug that automatically stirs any liquid inside of it using electromagnetism. It's pretty similar to those automatic stirs that you see in laboratories. And by adding this drainage piece, I can protect the resin prints from being damaged inside. Now flipping this bottom piece over, I bought some caster wheels to match what it looks like in the game. And after a bit of shaking to get the hex screws to fit, because my fingies are too small. This bottom piece can slide around freely. And I don't know if it was because of a lack of sleep or because I've been watching too many Tony Hawk videos, but I had the sudden urge to do a kickflip. <laughs> So now with my coffee mug perfectly fitting inside, along with its cap, we can finally move on to the curing station, where I'm using this motorized Lazy Susan to slowly rotate the prints to get perfect UV coverage. And because this thing's gonna go upside down, I'll be gluing this clear container so I can suspend the prints in the middle of the ball. And after adding the UV strip and wiring everything up, it was time to give it a test. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Hey, uh, editing Big Rig here. First of all, yes, I know, that was a weird reaction. I won't do it again. But second and more importantly, uh, that is a bare UV strip. Um, you're not supposed to look at that directly with your eyes. I should have been wearing eye protection. Uh, my bad. Don't do that at home. And, uh, I also won't do that again. I promise. Okay. And with that, I've actually done it. I've 3D printed a printer. And if something that meta isn't worth a like and subscribe, then I, I don't know what is. Anyways, now that I actually have this system, I need to start printing because I had a holiday party approaching in a few days and I uh, kind of need to quickly make some presents for my friends. So began the process of making as many items on Pokemon as possible before the party. And everything began with starting to print and if it was good enough, moving it to the wash, then closing everything up and starting the curing process. Now I'd like to say that this was all quick and easy and I had such a fun time, but it wasn't. For every successful print, there were about three or four failed prints. And at one point, I think I got some resin inside of the Z-axis motor and troubleshooting this issue took way too long. But eventually after cleaning that out and making everything work decently, I guess, the next step was to coat everything in some alcohol ink so it would still keep that transparency look. And after it dried to still make it as translucent as possible, I used a can of acrylic glossy spray. And for some of these prints, painting by hand is not my forte, but I really had to lock in for some of these fine details. But here's the part where I embarrassingly had to admit defeat. The entire time I was struggling to print out this one Gengar. I really wanted to print out this model because it really reminded me of my tiny translucent Gengar I had as a child. Unfortunately, this model was giving me a lot of trouble. Even with all the research I did into draining things out, making things hollow, making things solid, resin printing is not the easiest thing for a beginner. I tried different slicer settings, changing out the release film, using new resin, wiping everything down. This thing just wasn't printing. And it wasn't helping that this little hobbyist printer was getting to the point where it kind of couldn't print anything. So, I guess for the time being, Harry's still on the payroll. Yes! Looks like Killer Cans are back in the menu. And I do have to say he delivered because this Gengar looks incredible. And now I'm going to apply the same painting process that I did to the others. These are, that's the wrong color. Uh... And just in time too, because we now have a variety of different items and Pokemon of a... 
varying quality, that are going to be packed into these little presents for the party. But there's just one more project I have to print out. Because I don't think there's anyone that would do a better job of giving out random Pokemon gifts to people than Delibird himself. Time to go spread some holiday cheer. We got this. Yep. Oh, oh it is Delibird. Santa, but we oh. get Pokemon. <laughs> he respects women. Huh, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing better than spreading a little holiday cheer. Now eventually, I do want to fix the problems I'm facing with this mini resin printer, and I think the motor itself might be the problem, but if you know what could possibly be causing issues like this, or this, I'd appreciate your sagely advice in the comments. But if you want a 3D printer without all the headache-induced issues, I can't recommend enough Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon and AMS Combo. Because if you want to be serious about 3D printing, this thing's an absolute beast. It has the most advanced features a consumer-grade printer could have, like its LiDAR sensor to ensure that every time you start a print, the first layer is perfect. And I was on the tight deadline to get some of these parts printed out, so sometimes I needed to crank up the speed but I didn't see any loss in quality with any of my prints. And with the AMS system, you can get prints with up to four colors without having to worry about doing a shoddy paint job. Recently, I printed out all the parts of the Sceptile, which is actually an award holder for True Green 7's million sub button. And I couldn't have been happier with the results. So nowadays, the X1 is my go-to printer if I need to make sure something will get done correctly the first time. So if the X1 Carbon seems like the right fit for you, check out my link in the description below, and thank you to Bamboo Lab for sponsoring the video, and, as always, extra thanks to my lab executive patrons, Evan Timmerman, Pow Pow, Harley Jean, Grandma Watson, Marco Carini, Sally and Dave, Zebra Mang, Jimmers, Don Neko, Jameson Zabalos, and Connor Rhodes.